right, and joining me now is Justin James, who fights Gavin Tucker at UFC in Las Vegas. They're calling it UFC Vegas 6 between Derek Lewis and Alexi Olenek. Justin, I wanted to start by talking about your last fight, because obviously you take it on super late notice. You take it against a guy in Frank Camacho, and you knock him out quick. Everything seems to have gone 100% to plan. Well, did we see the best Justin James in there? No, man. I only got to see 40 seconds, man. It's, you know, I like to say that, uh, you know, there, there's so much more in my repertoire than just hitting people with big left hooks, although that is, you know, some of my favorite stuff to do, but... Man, I, I, I've, you know, I, I wasn't able to demonstrate anything of wrestling or grappling or any kickboxing for that matter. So I really think you're going to see, I, you can't say, you know, 41 seconds, how you're going to see the best of anybody. But, you know, I was really satisfied. You can never be, uh, you can never expect that to happen. You know, going to get someone as tough and as, and as good as Frank Camacho, man. I just happened to throw the right punch at the right time and uh, knock Frank out. Well, and I was going to ask you that, too. He had only been knocked out once in his UFC career, and it was to Jeff Neal at welterweight. H had that dawned on you after the fight, too, that you had just done what only – well, nobody at 155 pounds had done? Uh, I actually didn't know that until uh, right now, so that's, <laughs> that's, that's, that's actually pretty cool. I'm pretty uh, pretty happy with that, man. You know, as, as I like to say, is I hit as hard as a welterweight, you know, and I've always said that, you know, being – being short, you know, and I have shorter arms, you know, and uh, I can turn those punches over. And if I land a left hook or an overhand right or any kind of punch, it's, it's going to hurt my opponent, no doubt. Now, now, you obviously mentioned your wrestling and your grappling. I've seen some of your regional fights and seen some really slick submissions out of you. Do, do you plan on implementing more of that too here? Do, do you try to, to show a more complete game? Well, you know, it's, it's, it's funny how the fight game works, man. It's you know, I have a bag of tricks, and uh, I pull out my tricks as needed. You know, I, I, I don't like to, to show off, you know, any tr uh, unnecessary tricks that I don't need to because, you know, maybe in the next fight I'll use it. So, you know, I take it step by step and, uh, you know, minute by minute or play by play, for instance. It's like the Patriots, you know, they don't they don't come out and, and – or a football team, not just the Patriots, but they don't come out and do all their trick plays, you know, in the first quarter, you know, and expose themselves – you know, as the as my career goes on, and uh, you know, I fight more guys. You know, uh, they'll they'll come out in time, but uh, I don't want to I don't want to expose myself too soon. Yeah, that that makes a lot of sense to me. Now, I, I gotta ask too. You you know, you're fighting Gavin Tucker, coming off of a knockout of Frank Camacho, who some people might say is even like a little bit more prestigious of the name of Gavin Tucker, and you took that one on short notice and won in forty seconds. When they gave you the name Gavin Tucker, were you disappointed that it wasn't a bigger step up? Uh, not at all, actually. Uh, you know, Gavin, you know, I, I, I didn't, I, I didn't know who Gavin was and it's not, I'm not talking, this is not a, a, a slap at him by any means. I, I didn't know who he was, but after watching his fights, man, Gavin's tough. He's super fast. He's very crisp. He has great striking. He's a black belt in jujitsu. He has his last fight, incredible wrestling. Um, I, I think this is a very good test. And overall, I think Gavin might be one of the toughest guys, if not the toughest guys I've faced to date. Not to mention, I have to fight with the scale, too, to get down to featherweight for the first time in three years. Yeah, and I was going to ask you about that, too. You know, you, you have been a really long time away from that. You fought a guy last time who was coming in at welterweight. H how is that weight cut going? What, what is it like, been like, trying to cut that weight down? You know, here's the thing is my mouth's. My mouth rice checks. My body has to cash them, man. You know, I told Sean Shelby, I told Dana White that 145, 155, welterweight. I show up and I do my thing. So I was at the bar drinking beer after this last fight. My manager called and uh, he says, hey, we have Gavin Tucker in three and a half weeks. Do you want it? I said, well, can we get an extension for a week or two? I'm a little heavy. And uh, he's like, I'll call you back. Calls me back. And uh, he's like, no, it's this or nothing. You know, I told them I'm going to show up and I'm going to blow up. So you know what? I'm doing it. Uh, my weight's looking good. I'm about 160 pounds right now. It's not, you know, weight cut's never easy, man. You know, all, all the years of high school and college wrestling, and I had 50 amateur fights, and now that was my 20th pro fight. Weight cutting is never easy, but I'll get the job done August 7th, and then I'll fight on the 8th. And, and now I'm curious, too, because, you know, a lot of fighters, the, the tendency now seems to be going up in weight, to, to go up a weight class, you know, make the cut a little less on yourself, maybe get a little extra power, things like that. What, what sort of inspired you to decide that you wanted to go down? What, what inspired you to say, you know, featherweight makes more sense to me? Uh, it's not honestly that it makes more sense. Uh, I'm just the guy that when opportunity knocks, I answer the door, man. You know, I was 171 pounds when Jason uh, House called me to fight. He was, hey, man, we need to make it. was It was like 9 p.m. Wednesday. 
He's like, we got to get your medicals done. I'm thinking to myself, all right, well, I'll start cutting weight on Thursday at noon. I'll have all day and all night to cut. Well, let alone did I, little, uh, did I know that I had doctor's appointments from 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. to get all my medicals handled. And I, and I thought I had most of them handled. Obviously, I didn't. Uh, so I started cutting weight at 8 p.m. till 3 a.m., uh, you know, then 6 a.m. till till the weigh-in time. Uh, with that being said, like I said, UFC asked me to make featherweight. You know, I, opportunity, man. I got I got to answer the door. And I'm not just answering the door. I'm kicking that door in, and uh, I'm going to do the best thing I can do. Well, I'm sure they love the the company man style. Now, I, I wanted to ask you about a couple of other things too, because you know, you you come out for your first time, you make a hell of an impression. But the thing that made an impression on me is when they they announce your name and they announce the Guitar Hero. I, I'm a junkie for knowing nicknames and where nicknames come from. You got to tell me the story. Where, where does Guitar Hero come from? Well, it, it stemmed back in college. You know, I had a pretty extensive amateur career. Uh, my first amateur fight was in 2007. And uh, the first couple of years of my amateur career from 2007 to 2010, before I started working really my boxing and my kickboxing, I was a very boring fighter. So I was always looking, I was always looking to take guys down and look for rear naked chokes or ground and pound. So I was trying to find a niche that people would be excited to see me fight. Uh, you know, so uh, I was playing guitar hero in my college dorm with my buddy, Corey Michaelis. We're drinking some beer and he dared me, or I, I believe he bet me or dared me that I wouldn't come out you know, with a guitar hero, like wrapped around my neck and uh, like big aviator sunglasses on and, uh, you know, kind of make a show before the show. Uh, Cause like I said, I knew my fights were boring, but I had to have a niche to where I wanted people excited to see me. And uh, even if my fights were boring uh, at, at the regional circuit, especially in Michigan, people were always excited to see me because I was doing, you know, funny, silly shit. Uh, you know, like I said, I was the guitar hero a whole bunch of times. I came to Vegas. I did it. I wore a shirt that said, I shaved my balls for this. And I did <laughs> as I'm walking to the ring, if you check on my Instagram, J A Y zero nine M I, you'll see, I posted a picture a couple weeks ago, uh, me at Royal Oak music theater, which is a big music theater in Michigan. Probably a couple thousand people were there and I have this guitar and I'm like jamming to AC DC walking out to the ring and uh, the people loved it. And like I said, no one ever remembers that rear naked choke submission out hit, but they're always like, oh, dude, you're the guy that used to strum the guitar all the way to the ring. <laughs> so I stopped doing that in like 2009. And I kind of, and that's when I started working with Kara Rowe and James Lee and uh, Darren Crookshank was my college roommate. Uh, we uh, started working my kickboxing boxing. I kind of got away from it for a while. But when Bruce Buffer called me the guitar hero, I was like, oh, shit. Like, I haven't heard this in 10 years. And, uh, you know, then one of the guys at the UFC called and they asked if I want to keep it. And I said, the guitar hero lives, man. Justin, the guitar hero, James is here to stay. Oh, I, I love that story. Now, uh, you know, before we get to a prediction and before I let you go here too, I did also notice on your Instagram, which once again, people can find them at J-A-Y-O-9-M-I. Uh, I noticed that your son is now training with you too. How did that come about? And, and how long has he been training with you? Uh, it's on and off. It's like, you know what? I don't want necessarily him to be a fighter, you know, but I do want him to be able to defend himself, you know, even from a grappling standpoint, you know, and uh, it's just something that, you know, when I was a kid, I always wanted to be, when I was uh, very young, I wanted to be a professional wrestler. And then as I got a little bit older, I wanted to be a professional boxer because I'd see Mike Tyson. And then I went back to wanting to be a professional wrestler. And, you know, when I was 16, 17 years old, I remember wanting to be a professional MMA fighter. And, uh, you know, just for him to see, you know, me training and how hard I've worked and how much time and how much uh, perseverance I've had to have over the last, uh, you know, 12 to 15 years, you know, through my wrestling in college, through my wrestling in high school, through my amateur career, through my pro career. It just I'm so thrilled about it. And, uh, you know, it's it's always been a huge stress of mine these last couple of years because my son lives in Michigan and I live in Las Vegas and I moved out to Vegas to pursue this dream. So it, it just to know that he knows that his dad made it and how hard I worked and, uh, you know, how much time and effort and the sacrifice I made and back to him training. Like he doesn't really care for training. Uh, he does it because I want him to. Um, and, but I don't push it on him. You know, it's, I, I need him to stay in shape. I need to know how to, and, uh, you know, when it, when it comes down to that kind of stuff, it just, you know, it, it, he has to do something. We got to get him off the video games. We got to get these kids <laughs> off the video games and get him in a wrestling room, get him in a grappling room and, and that's, and that's kind of where I'm at right now. I want him off the video games. I want him getting on a mat, putting on a gi, do some wrestling, do some, you know, basic level boxing. Not to mention it's fun to choke him out if he pisses me off. <laughs> Absolutely. Now, I got to ask too, is, is it a little bit upsetting that you can't bring him to these fights, right? Like you, you, it's your two fights into the UFC. None of your friends, none of your family has been able to attend it. How frustrating is that? 
you know, as for my friends and family, yeah, that's a, that's a bummer, man. But guess what? This is my job. You know, I don't show up at my friend's job and you know, <laughs> try to root for them. I think the biggest bummer for me is for him because I really want him to be there. I want him to feel the electricity mm-hmm. of having that crowd cheering for me. And even at the apex, you know, although although there's nobody there, the the energy uh, of the production is just so awesome. And, uh, you know, I've really tossed around having him in my corner as my third man. Um, I won't be doing it this fight, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't be surprised if my next fight or two, uh, uh, he'll be there, hold my water bottle. And, and now you're, you're 2-0 and in, in this year and in a very short period of time in the UFC. How, no. how many, or 1-0, and sorry, 1-0, 1-0, and this win would make you 2-0. and How many times do you plan on fighting this year? Do you plan on having more fights uh, in 2020? Yeah, you know, I have a four-fight contract as we're signing with Frank. Uh, I, my goal was to 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 renew my contract by the end of the year, man. As long as I'm not injured, I'm ready to fight, dude. I've uh, this this uh, signing this UFC contract has been remotivating, re-energizing. I'm refocused. My goals have all you know been remastered now, and I, and I'm ready to go, man. After I knock Gavin Tucker out within two rounds, uh, I'll be ready to go September, October, November, December, as long as I'm not injured. Well, you, you actually stole my last question from me then, because usually I ask for a prediction. It, it sounds like f- knockout in the first two rounds. Do you have a, a way that you plan on getting that knockout? Are we going to see some ground and pound? How, how are you going to get him out of there? You know, I, I, I think I just have to land one good shot, honestly. I think uh, going down to featherweight, my power is going to be again. I'm going to be hitting like a, wel- a welterweight coming in. I'm giving myself two rounds because of how, how good – he is, and I'm not taking away from anything. I think Gavin Tucker is an incredible fighter. I think if if I get away from my game plan and start playing into his game because he's going to pot shot me and get away, and you know he might try and make some wrestling exchanges, you know he he could win a boring decision, and that's my biggest concern. Is dude, I'm not here for to lose or win boring decisions. I'm here to knock people out. I'm here to hurt people. I want people like you and all of the other people talking about my fight for weeks and months on and excited to see me again. Nobody wants to see a boring a guy come in and win a boring decision. With that being said, I think within two rounds, I can figure Gavin out in the cage and I can land a big overhand right or a left hook and, and finish him. All right. Well, you heard it here first, folks. This was Justin James who fights Gavin Tucker at UFC in Vegas. They're calling it UFC Vegas 6, Lewis versus Olenek. Justin, thanks so much for the time, man. I really appreciate it. I appreciate you having me. I'll talk to you soon. Thanks, man. Thanks.